Hi, my name is Troy Beagle. I'm with Premier Tech Horticulture's Grower Services Department, cover the Mid-Atlantic United States. Um, today, I'm going to be talking to you about enhancing your growing media experience with Promix. And we're going to kind of focus on how biological additives can help produce a better growing experience for, for yourself and, and produce a higher quality crop. Before we get into that, I'd just like to thank Griffin Greenhouse Supply for allowing me to come speak at their expo and uh, we do appreciate that. So with that, let's get into our, our discussion today. So we're going to break it down kind of into four areas. First, I'm going to briefly talk about our product line, our Promix product line. Then we're going to talk about mycorrhizal fungi, which is our glomus and our biofungicide, which is the bacillus subtilis. And then last, we're going to talk about the biofungicide plus mycorrhizae combination. In this case, we have a bacillus pumulus, which plays better with the mycorrhizal fungi so that's why we have two different biofungicide organisms. And we're going to discuss a little bit about, just real briefly, about how biofungicide and mycorrhizae together also seems to help with some insect suppression. So first, talking about the product line, most people are familiar with the Promix BX. It's our standard general purpose product uh, used for pretty much from one end of the spectrum to the other, pretty much used for any type of growing, except for maybe some types of seed germination. and in the general purpose category, we also have Promix LP15, both of which are just kind of used for pretty much any type of growing. In more of a specialized fashion, we have Promix HP, which is our high porosity growing media. And basically this Promix HP is there to help introduce more air space into the growing media. So if you or your uh, you know, help that you have hired uh, are not real good with watering, in other words, they tend to overwater, Promix HP will help keep the air in the root system or near the root system, even though the media is being watered a lot. So this is good for heavy handed waterers. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we have our Promix HPCC and our Promix CC40. These both have chunk core, which help retain water. Uh, so they're our highest water retaining mixes we offer. And those would be designed more for hanging baskets uh, and, and uh, maybe long-term planters that we put outside in hot sun in the summer. We also have organic growing media, the Promix PG, which is our germination mix for seed, seed germination for plug applications as well. And our Promix MP, which is a multiple purpose type organic mix, which kind of kind of dovetails well to the same applications you use for Promix BX. We have our Promix YP, our young plant production product. Uh, essentially, it's designed for cutting propagation and for use for paper wrap pots like Ellie pots. We have two uh, plug and germination growing media, our Promix FPX, which is our fine peat, fine perlite mix, which is designed to have better drainage, and our Promix PGX, which is our fine peat, fine vermiculite mix, which retains a little bit more water. And last category would be our bark-based mixes, which depending on the percentage of bark, the higher the percentage of bark, the greater the drainage and the faster the dry down. So these tend to retain a little bit less water. So our two Canadian products are Promix BRK and BRK20 are shown to the left. And the other four products to the right there, the Promix BK25, BK55, BK25V, and BK45V are available out of our plant out of Virginia, which is only kind of restricted more or less to the Eastern United States. Uh, the number in the name indicates percentage of, of um, bark that's in, included in the product. So the first thing we want to talk about in our biological additive line would be the mycorrhizae, which is our glomus and erratices. So one of the questions we get is, why do plants need to use endomycorrhizal fungi? So let me just say off to the start here, there's ectomycorrhizae, which is more for trees and shrubs, and endomycorrhizae, which colonize most of your greenhouse crops. So why do these plants need endomycorrhizal fungi? How did they evolve with that? What's their purpose? Well, Plant roots can easily acquire nitrogen and potassium and other elements readily from a soil environment. They don't get fixed, so they're fixed to the soil particles themselves. So they're easily mobile, are easy to take up. In the case of elements such as phosphorus and zinc and a few other micronutrients, they become rapidly fixed to soil particles. So they become electronically bound, if you want to say, so or even chemically bound. So what ends up happening is they're not very mobile or readily available. So as a result, the plant roots very quickly will use up the phosphorus and zinc content in a soil. So you form this, this depletion zone around the root system or around the roots. So then comes the question that the plant has to ask itself. 
if I need to acquire more phosphorus and zinc to maintain healthy growth, I'm going to have to start partitioning part of the photosynthates that I produce and apply towards producing more roots. So if the roots continue to extend out into the soil environment or even growing media, then I can go to a new area where I can obtain more phosphorus and zinc until that area depletes. The problem is when photosynthates are having to be given to the plant's root system to be able to go out and more efficiently mine out the soil or the growing media, that means there's less photosynthates left over to produce stems, leaves, flowers, and fruit on the plant. Well, endomycorrhizae, on the other hand, is here to help. So what it does is endomycorrhizae will basically grow towards the root tips of the plant, colonize it, and grow out beyond the root system or past the root system to bring in water and nutrients back to the plant. So therefore, the mycorrhizal fungi can help more efficiently mine out the growing media. It does it through either solubilizing phosphorus and other elements and bringing it to the plant or just simply taking what's already soluble and just bring it to the plant. So it acts kind of as an extension of the root system. Now, here's the good news. Endomycorrhizae requires fewer photosynthates because remember, photosynthates are food to the, to the endomycorrhizal fungi. So it requires less food or less photosynthates from the plant to feed the mycorrhizal fungi to obtain these nutrients than the plant taking those photosynthates and using it towards producing more roots. Therefore, since the balance is such that with mycorrhizal fungi, fewer photosynthates are used over producing more roots, the bottom line is there's more photosynthates left over through the process of photosynthesis, the sugars and stuff the plant produces, there's more of those left over to produce more plant growth, produce more flowers, and also increase fruit yield on the plant. And that's where we see the benefit coming from mycorrhizal fungi. So how does mycorrhizal fungi work? Well, as we get our video loaded here, what we see is mycorrhizal fungi starts out as basically as a little hyphae that grows towards the root of the plant. Then the thing kind of circles the outside of the root finds a place to penetrate the root itself and it grows in between the root cells until finally it finds one root cell where it will grow into. It then forms a structure called arbuscules, which is what we see here, it's that tree-like structure. So now the water and nutrients coming from the soil from the mycorrhizal fungi is now coming into the cell of the plant and it's, shall we say, fertilizing the plant or feeding the plant. In return, the plant then takes up photosynthates from the plant and it takes it back into its structure and it uses it to produce more mycorrhizal, you know, hyphae, spores, all those types of things. So within the mycorrhizal hyphae, you got like a highway system. One side of the highway is bringing in water nutrients to the roots. And then the other side of the highway is taking photosynthates from the plant roots, taking it back and building more structure. So how does it function? Well, we kind of touched on a little bit of this right away or previously here, but endomycorrhizal fungi, again, as I mentioned, they grow hyphae. So hyphae grow into the root, colonize the root. Then they grow out beyond the root system to bring in water and nutrients to the plant. That increases the total absorptive area in which the plant roots can acquire nutrients. So mycorrhizal fungi will improve acquisition uptake of elements such as phosphorus, copper, manganese, zinc, uh, and also water. And what we find is because it takes up water, it also brings with it, as is the case, there's some nitrogen that's been solubilized in the water, potassium, iron, all that. All that also comes with it, but specifically mycorrhizal fungi is used for those basic elements. So since the plant is more, you know, it's getting the nutrients it needs on a regular basis, it delays the onset of nutrient deficiencies, even if the plants are not fertilized properly. It also helps to reduce the effects of environmental stresses on the plant. And we do tend to find that the greater the stress load is on the plant, you know, if you compare the plant with mycorrhizal fungi, it will perform much better versus the plant without mycorrhizal fungi. Again, assuming that the plant is under a great amount of stress. So the greater the stress, the greater the benefit. The plant, as I mentioned, provides endomycorrhizae with photosynthates, which is carbohydrates, starches, that type of thing, but also the plant also has some sort of ability to be able to help protect the mycorrhizal fungi from being attacked by pathogens specific to mycorrhizal fungi. 
And it also, the once the mycorrhizae colonizes the plant, it will remain with the plant throughout its life cycle. Because remember, the plant is the source of food for the mycorrhizae. Mycorrhizae cannot survive without the presence of a plant. So what are the benefits to you or to the consumer? So for the grower, grower doesn't see huge differences in growth unless for some reason your injector's not working right or fertilizer application's a little bit off. But in general, where we, you, the grower sees the benefits is there are reduced nutritional issues that show up because again, the plant is able to, through the mycorrhizal fungi, more uniformly or more completely mine out the growing media to bring the nutrients to the plant. It helps to reduce the water stress because again, the mycorrhizal fungi are to help mine that water out of that growing media. So it delays the onset of nutrient deficiencies and basically flagging from underwatering. But for the retailer, the garden center where the plants are brought in, their chances are they're probably not fertilizing the plants as best or to the best of their needs and also probably not watering to the plants needs. So therefore there's more stress introduced. So therefore there's more benefits seen by mycorrhizal fungi. Since that can happen, this can extend the shelf life. So the plant can hold up to lack of fertilizer, improper watering longer. It will extend the shelf life of the plant and at the same time reduce losses due to the plants looking terrible or just being underwatered, wilting quickly and then dying from lack of water. But for the end user where they take the plant and then transplant it either into the soil environment or they just put it out in their front porch, uh, what the mycorrhizal fungi will help there is when you pull, as an example, in the soil environment, you pull the plant out of the pot, you put it in the soil, mycorrhizal fungi will immediately start to grow out into the soil environment, bringing in nutrients to help the plant transition more smoothly as its roots start to grow out into the surrounding soil environment. So it reduces transplant shock, it faster establishment, and also help reduce the effects of nutritional stress and water stress on the plant. Bottom line, with mycorrhizal fungi, it will help to reduce loss due to nutrient or water issues. It'll save money for the grower because they'll get less complaints. Uh, plants will not need as much, shall we say, correction from nutritional deficiencies. And a retailer will also save money because they're throwing out fewer plants. Some of the other benefits we've seen. So as an example, in the case of strawberries, uh, the fruit itself, we see increased antioxidants, which of course improves the health benefits of the strawberries for the consumer. For tomatoes, we see increased carotenoids and volatile compounds. These both contribute towards the flavor of the tomato, so it improves the flavor of the fruit of the tomato. Citrus, we see increased sugars, again, increasing the flavor, making it more desirable. And we also see an increase in vitamin C production, organic acids and flavonoids within the, the citrus itself, again, increasing health benefits. So one of the questions we usually get is, why do you guys use a single strain uh, Glomus interatices, endomycorrhizal fungi in your products, where so many other companies out there use cocktails of different types of mycorrhizal fungi? And this is going to help answer that question. So Premier 32 years ago decided to look at the Glomus interatices because at that time and still to this day, it's the most researched of the uh, uh, mycorrhizal fungi that are found out there in the market and offers the greatest benefits to the widest variety of plants. Although mycorrhizal fungi do have some host specificity, it's not very much. So if we take a look at, there's 341 different varieties or of vesicular or muscular endomycorrhizal fungi. And of that, they colonize 200,000 plants. So you see it's not one fungus to each plant, it's one fungus will basically colonize a lot of different plants. Uh, Glomus interaces is a very strong, rapid colonizer. So once it gets on the root system, it's very faithful and very strong and will help that plant to endure a lot of hardships if it should see it, hopefully not. Um, and it also stores best within the growing media. It will last easily up to two years in the growing media as long as the temperatures don't exceed 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Now with mycorrhizal cocktails, a couple things just to kind of look at here. First of all, ectomycorrhizae are great for trees and shrubs. They benefit trees and shrubs, but they don't really work and they don't benefit the uh, greenhouse crops at all. They don't colonize them. So in that case, if you're growing greenhouse crops and you're having it added to your growing media, they serve no benefit whatsoever unless you're doing trees and shrubs. Now, many different types of endomycorrhizae, regardless of the species, will colonize the roots of many plants. 
Um, so for instance, a tomato plant might be colonized by, let's say, 100 different types of, of endomycorrhizae. But here's the problem. Not all endomycorrhizae are created equal. Some will greatly benefit the plant and produce visual results or tangible results for the grower to actually measure, and some will not. And the case is, why would you put in an organism that doesn't provide a lot of benefit uh, when you could use some that can, or a single one that can produce a lot of benefits? Now, multiple strains, so if you have multiple strains of endomycorrhizae, will colonize the root system of the same plant. So think about it this way. If you've got a root growing through the growing media, the root will become colonized by the mycorrhizal fungi organism that's closest to it. So if you have a weak or a poor performing strain that colonizes that root, that root is now colonized. It will cannot be colonized by another organism. So it's already done. So that means that that portion of the root system is actually not working to its full potential as it would if it had glomus enteratices or another variety that was stronger. So this, this last point, I'm going to go into the next slide because it's covered here. So a single species inoculum tended to increase crop growth response on average of 42% over using a cocktail of different types of mycorrhizal fungi. 42% increase using a single species. And that single species is one that's known to cause greatest benefit. This is out of 435 experiments they found this average. So it's not just one experiment, it's looking at 435 experiments. Now, as we mentioned before, uh, whatever is there first will then command control of that part of the root system. So a weak species can outcompete and prevent a stronger species from getting on the plant root system. And then the last point, if you have these less effective fungi, they could dilute the effects of a stronger fungi. And that's where you see the fact that you don't get quite the same benefit. Uh, as a matter of fact, this last author felt that Glomacidoratoses has turned up as a wonder fungus, which is equal or superior to mixtures of other endomycorrhizal fungi on the market today. So again, cocktails don't make sense because Yes, maybe Glomus interaces does not produce the greatest amount of benefits in all plants it colonizes, but that's true with all the organisms. The difference is Glomus interaces will do that with a higher percentage of plants than the other ones on the market today. Next, I want to talk about the biofungicide. So the biofungicide that we offer in both products is a bacillus bacterium. Uh, and basically the bacillus bacterium will produce an antibiotic or a polypeptide that essentially wards off root diseases caused by Alternaria, Fusarium, Pythium, and Rhizoctonia. So that's both our Bacillus subtilis and our regular biofungicide product, and the Bacillus pumulus, which is in our biofungicide plus mycorrhizae. So therefore, if you don't, don't have as much root disease pressure there because these organisms are being suppressed, not necessarily eliminated, but suppressed, that will reduce the need for chemical fungicide drenches for root disease. Now, I do tell growers that if you do get plant material in, whether it's plugs or rooted cuttings, and you're not sure if they have root disease on them, it's probably best to treat them with a chemical fungicide first and then transplant into a mix, as what we're talking about here. And then apply when needed, not necessarily on a schedule, but apply when needed. So with the bacillus on the root system, you get a healthier, stronger root system because you're not having a, basically a pathogen working on the root system. So you get better use of fertilizer and water because obviously damaged roots can't take that up very well and you get improved overall plant growth, okay? So you get a reduction of plant loss, stimulates plant growth and reduces grower costs from basically from plant loss or from having to apply fungicide drenches. The bacillus bacteria are both safe to use so there's no human or plant toxicity and all crops benefit from these bacteria lines. So here's a picture in the middle of this slide, we see a plant root and around it, we see these kind of dark kind of blue gray little dots, which are actually the bacteria, the bacillus bacteria, in this case, bacillus pumulus. So what happens is the roots give off exudates or they give off photosynthates, you know, sugar, starches, all that stuff that goes out into that growing media, which serves as food for the bacillus pumulus. And that food then becomes something that these guys are going to grow on, reproduce, and they produce an antibiotic as a 
or polypeptide as a waste product that will keep a pathogen from going through that zone and going to attack that root system. Next, we want to talk about the biofungicide plus the mycorrhizae combination found in some of our ProMix products. So before we do that, I want to talk about bacteria and glomus interatices or glomus species in general. Um, there are situations where bacteria will actually colonize endomycorrhizal fungi. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what that looks like. So there are specific bacterial strains that will, together with the glomus, cause the, improve, the following improvement in plants. So you get improved nutrient acquisition, because we find that, obviously we talk about the mycorrhizae, how it takes up nutrients, but some bacteria will produce hormones or enzymes to actually help break down um, complex, uh, you know, organic materials that will release the nutrients and then if the plant roots there, the plant roots can take it up, or if the mycorrhizae is there, it can take it up. So it increased nutrient acquisition. It inhibits pathogenic root rot fungi, which we talked about before. Um, and we'll see a little bit later that this is greatly increased by mycorrhizal fungi in the case of the Bacillus pumulus, which is on our product. It also enhances root branching, so it creates a better root system. What we found is the reason why this that bacteria are colonizing the hyphae of mycorrhizae is because glomus also leaks exudates. Whether it's you know, leftover exudates coming from the roots or whether they produce their own, I'm not really sure. But these exudates are food for certain types of bacteria, not all, but certain strains. So it feeds and stimulates certain bacterial strains. And these bacterial strains, because this is a food source, will form a strong relationship or association with the glomus. When that bacteria grows and multiplies, just like it does on the root system, it will also coat the hyphae of the mycorrhizal fungi and serve as a physical barrier for pathogens that would attack the mycorrhizal fungi, and also as a chemical barrier and antibiotic produced that will help to keep the plant pathogens at bay. And result is with the bacteria there, it can actually help protect the glomus interatices from being attacked by pathogens. A plant not plant pathogens per se, but fungal pathogens, if we can say that. Now, if this bacteria happens to be also a biofungicide or have biofungicidal properties, such as in the case of Bacillus subtilis and Bacillus pumulus, then having the roots colonized by the Bacillus bacteria and the hyphae of the mycorrhizal fungi colonized by the Bacillus bacteria you greatly increase the population of the biofungicide bacteria. And it's now consisting of a higher percentage of the growing media is now under, shall we say, protection. So it makes it more difficult for a pathogen to get established in there since a higher ratio of that growing media has these organisms in there. So it'll help to further reduce the need for fungicide drenches. It will help to reduce plant loss and it will increase your profits quite well. But not all biofungicide bacteria species will colonize glomus. It's kind of a specialized little property there. Now here's a picture showing what I'm referring to. So over on the left, you see the plant root. Notice that kind of that ring kind of around it, uh, that ring kind of that lighter bluish white color, that's the bacillus bacteria growing in the root system. Now from that, you see all this webbing in the rest of that slide. All that webbing is hyphae of the of the uh, glomus interatices, the mycorrhizal fungi. Some of those hyphae have a thickened, they're thickened in diameter, and that thickness is not coming from the hyphae, but that's the bacteria, the bacillus pumulus, growing on the mycorrhizal fungi hyphae. So if you think about it, again, the bacteria not only are growing on the roots, but they're growing on the hyphae. So it greatly increases the area of the growing media that actually has uh, protection coming from the biofungicide bacteria, which is a pretty exciting, I believe. Now, just to kind of summarize, so what we have here is what we call a tripartite association between the plant, the biofungicide, and the mycorrhizae. So step one is the plant exudes carbohydrates or photosynthates as we talked about into the growing media which feed the fungi the the glomus interatices the mycorrhizae and then the mycorrhizae will then colonize the root system in step two basically the hyphae 
will then grow out from the root system out into the surrounding growing media from the mycorrhizal fungi, where it more efficiently explores the soil or growing media, bringing in extra water and nutrients back to the growing media to feed the plant. But in addition, the hyphae exudes uh, carbon-rich exudates, which then in turn feed, as in step three would say here, would feed bacteria. And these bacteria will absorb these carbon-rich uh, um, so of, of exudates that come from the actual hyphae, thereby growing along the the hyphae of that of the mycorrhizal fungi. There's this incredible network of bacteria that grow along the entire length of it, and this results in the bacteria, of course, then produce lipopeptides, which are the antibiotics which help suppress root disease organisms and also produce hormones that will also help to improve somewhat to some degree, the uh, basically the, uh, the plant growth rate. So this results in a plant that is protected and stimulated by this, uh, this, uh, this tripartite association. Now, also with the biofungicide plus mycorrhizae, we have some research that shows there's a reduction in the population of fungus gnats and thrips by having that in there. Uh, the fungus gnats, we, we figure the reason why it's happening is the um, biofungicide is producing an antibiotic, which the polypeptide, which is not only controlling some of the root rod pathogens, but maybe controlling other fungi, reducing the this food source for the fungus gnat larvae. With thrips, we're not really sure how it works. We know part of their life cycle does occur in the growing media while there's some toxicity that's going on there that's doing it, but at any rate, with these two organisms, we see somewhere between a 20 and 40% reduction in their populations, which we'll go into maybe in a, in a future presentation. Um, but right now, you'll actually see that on the bags of the biofungicide plus mycorrhizae. And I just want you to know, we have a full line of grower services people, you know, I'm one of them. We have a, a full line of people, uh, six of us. We're here, so if you have questions about our products, if you need on-site visits because you're having some crop uh, concerns or difficulties, we are here to help. So anytime you need to get a hold of us, just let us know, or you can even work through your, your sales representative as well. And please consult our website, pthorticulture.com. We have a wealth of information on there. We have product technical data sheets. Uh, we have articles that you can read to learn more about growing media, about watering, fertilization, how all that interacts. We've got calculators to determine, you know, it, you know how you can save money by using the biofungicide product over um, over just standard mix. We also have pot filling guides. You know how many pots do you fill from from you know basically a bag of of growing media. Case studies that shows how these biofungicides and mycorrhizae work, so forth and so on. So please check out our website. And uh, with that, I want to thank you for listening, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks.